Hello, uh, Simon was saying Tesco is... OK, so yesterday it was all about the markets and we just watched the Dow. And it was... But then it... Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a roller coaster. More analysis later on. <laughs> yeah, so the Dow, the Dow plunged 2% uh, on the open yesterday, but as you say, it recovered and actually it closed up yesterday. Um, and let's see how Europe is getting on so far today. You Panic can see... over. Yeah, the CAM seems to have uh, arrived, although my favourite quote that I've read from an al one analyst said that this could just be a fake-out before another sell-off. A fake-out? A fake-out. I haven't heard that one before. That's like a dead cat bounce, isn't it? Where do they come from? I don't know. Good. Well, they need to think up something creative. Um, yeah. So <laughs> that's where the European markets are at the minute. Now, obviously, the Dow, the US markets, have just opened in the last sort of 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So let's mm. speak uh, to Yogata Lamai, who's on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Yogata, how has trade kicked off today? Well, at the opening bell, the Dow was trading in the red. It was down a bit. It was, in fact, it was around 100 points at one point. And right now, I'm looking at it, it's up about uh, 80 points, changes as we speak. But essentially, again, we're seeing this sort of volatility. And as I was saying yesterday, uh, traders here are expecting that choppiness to sort of last for the end of, the, at least until the end of the week. Uh, and today, interestingly, Rachel, also there'll be some governors of the Federal Reserve who will be speaking at different events. Uh, these are members of the committee that makes interest rate decisions although their official meeting is not until March. I think people here will be watching very closely for what they have to say because obviously that could give some indication about where interest rates are going to go. Uh, now, Yogata, there's another big story uh, in the States today. We've got the ex-boss of Uber, Travis Kalanick. He's been appearing in court at, at a trial where Uber have been accused of stealing driverless car technology uh, from Google's Waymo. Give us a bit more background to the case. Well, at the center of this dispute is a man named Anthony Lewandowski. He was essentially a Google employee and a major part of Google's self-driving project, self-driving technology project, which was later spun off into a company called Waymo. Now, in 2016, this man quit Google. Uh, he founded his own startup, which was later acquired by Uber. Uh, and Waymo's accusation is that he stole 14,000 documents, which contained trade secrets, was basically found the base of Uber's self-driving technology. Uh, but interestingly, what Waymo needs to convince the jury is not about whether this theft of documents actually occurred or not, but whether what is in those documents is actually linked to Uber's self-driving technology. And just briefly, Yogata, what did Mr. Kalanick have to say in court? Well, yes, he appeared in court and, uh, you know, Waymo's lawyers were, try uh, you know, they showed a visitor's pass saying that Anthony Lewandowski actually visited uh, him at the Uber office while he was still a Google employee. As far as Mr. Kalanick is concerned, uh, he says, uh, you know, as far as uh, Mr. Lewandowski was concerned, uh, he wanted to found a company uh, and, uh, you know, Mr. Kalanick was simply looking to hire and that was what the meeting was about. Okay, Yogata Lamai on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, thank you for that. Quick look. Yeah, let's look. But let's look at some individual stocks instead. I've put up Tesco because we said there in the headlines, Tesco could be so facing... So they face a £4 billion pound bill and yet their share price their goes share up. Their share price was down earlier today. It's now gone up. We're going to discuss that with our markets guest at a quarter to five. So we'll find out what is the rationale behind that, if there is any. Mm -hmm. uh, and Rio Tinto, global mining company, they announced uh, better than expected results, a huge increase in profits because commodity prices are really surging and their share price, they're up just under 1%. Okay, see you later on. See you later. Thank you. Hello, Tesco's is potentially facing a bill of up to four billion pounds. Now, Brexit. Focus is what? Trade, immigration, financial services. But you're looking on something else. Yeah, we're looking at healthcare today because we've got results out from GlaxoSmithKline, GSK, uh, who are the UK's uh, biggest pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical yep. company. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, quite uh, impressive results. Full year revenue of over £30 billion, uh, up 8% of the previous year, beating expectations. Uh, but what's interesting is last month, Phil Thompson, who's the president of global affairs at GSK, he made a statement saying that the company is putting aside £70 million pounds, uh, to help them prepare for Brexit. That they haven't started spending it yet. They're just putting it to one side uh, once they work out what it is that they need to do. And he said that is money that they could have been spending uh, on researching cancer drugs. Uh, now let's speak to Mike Thompson. He is Chief Executive at the Association of British Pharmaceuticals Industry. Uh, Mike, what are pharmaceutical companies concerned about when it comes to Brexit? 
Now some good news for workers. Well, yeah, this is all to do with the Taylor review uh, into working practices that was reported last year. This is now the government's response, and they're saying that they uh, want to improve conditions for millions of workers, including those in the gig economy. So uh, they want stricter enforcement of holiday and sick pay. Uh, they want higher fines for firms that breach their um, duties to workers. Um, but you know, it is good news for some workers, but there's been criticism of this. Some people saying that actually uh, it's not doing enough in terms of providing new rights for workers. It's just trying to enforce uh, what should already be in place. Let's hear from our business correspondent, Theo Leggett. So, markets. Markets. Now, do you remember yesterday we were talking about whether or not uh, President Trump had tweeted? Well, it was all red. So now it's green. Has there been a tweet? Yes, he's oh, tweeted. What a surprise. <laughs> he said, uh, in the good old days, or in the old days, when good news was reported, the stock market would go up. Today, when good news is reported, the stock market goes down. Big mistake, and we have so much good, great news about the economy. Exclamation point. Well, well uh, that's all the explanation you need. Well, the explanation you need is that the stock markets are not the economy. But anyway. There isn't time. No. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. See you in an hour. <laughs> Hello, house prices have fallen for the second month in a row. Let's talk about the markets. Let's. Well, uh, the markets have been a bit of a roller coaster yesterday. Today, I there I is a bit more. Calm. I don't know if he's looking at you or he's I actually looking at the screen. But... That might have been him at the open because uh, the Dow did fall again at the open, but it did recover. The Dow is now in the green. European markets, the CAC, SADAX, the FTSE, they're all trading up in the green. And yesterday, the watchword uh, was correction. Today, I'd love to see it. I don't have it, Simon. I'm sorry. But presumably, I'll get it for, for the tomorrow. last few years, it's been flat. It's and, been pretty really flat. And also, what is interesting is not only is it an index, but it is an index on which people trade, so people take bets. Well, of course bets. it is, but one must depend on the other or, I mean, you can you can play it either way. Well, yeah, and there are a lot of funds which would have bet on a continued uh, sort of calm market, which would have seen huge losses in the last couple of days. So a lot of people talking about that. Now, you've, we've been talking about calm returning to the markets. That may not be right, because what, what we're seeing with the FTSE, it's, 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 it's a bit higher but things can still happen, can't yeah, they? Yeah, so some people are saying that um, it's, it's a fake-off that we're seeing at the minute. So it's, it's, it's fallen, it's settled, but perhaps it hasn't reached its bottom. Uh, because a this lot is, of this people, is London, is it? This, this is, is in London. This is the Great British fake-off. Yeah, the Great British fake-off. Oh, Simon, you're good. Uh, I hadn't thought of that one. <laughs> no, I know. Let's get it on a strap. Anyway, um, yeah, they're saying that there may be further to fall because a lot of people are saying we've seen these big bear markets, these rises continually uh, since about 2009, and now it was time for a correction. There's too much value in the markets and as we explained earlier in the week this uh, fall many say has come from fears that interest rates are going to rise faster than they thought they would in the US uh, and instead that's going to mean if interest rates rise quicker uh, people have other places they could put their money so investors could be taking their money out of the market. Okay one of our headlines the story about Tesco facing a possible four billion pound payment What's that doing to its share price? Well, its share price was down earlier today. It is now, however, up. It's up about one. And these jobs are of equal value. Therefore, they should get equal pay. And if it is judged to be equal pay, then there is scope for back pay to be backdated. And that is why Tesco could face a bill of four billion. But we're not saying the share price today has ended up. Has it? I mean, it, they don't sound comparable. Men in a warehouse women are doing the, the so the argument work. is that the women in the stores they are stacking shelves they are talking to customers men in the warehouse they do not have to deal with customers mm -hmm. and they are equally taking things off shelves putting them on vans bringing them to the stores the women are taking those putting them on the shelves but also have the interaction with customers but that's what's being argued in the courts okay so shares up but which always strikes me as odd yes. when, when 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 a company seems to be facing a bad headline and, and but it's a, it's a long court case, so we'll see where that goes. Oh. Now, let's look at yeah. where the shares are today. We put up the FTSE. They're up almost 2%. Uh, tomorrow, Bank of England will have their uh, quarterly inflation report released. We'll find out if there's any movement on interest rates. That decision will come tomorrow. You'll remember they held them steady in December with a vote of nine to keep them where they are and zero against. Uh, we're not expecting any movement on interest rates. Uh, the next one expected, people are saying, possibly in May. But it'll be interesting to see what the comments come out. Um, the Dow Jones there, you can see that's trading up as well. I put up Talk Talk, Thomas Cook uh, and Twitter in the US all releasing uh, results tomorrow. So it's all the T's. OK, don't go away because I've just heard in my ear we've got something on hedgehogs. Are you a fan of hedgehogs? I love hedgehogs. Well, watch this. Okay.